Hi. Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing? Hi, Lewis. Been a long time no see in the Vev Lounge together. Yeah, no, you, uh, you've been away. I haven't got my light on, actually. I haven't got my ring light on. Put it's your time. ring light on, dude. Yeah, I know. I look awful. Why don't you tell me? There we go. No, Ooh, you look amazing. Run. There we go. Now I've got my light You on. always look amazing. Now I look even more amazing. But the ring light does give one that extra glow, you know? I know, right? I need it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, welcome back, Marlin. Thank you, and welcome back to everyone else. How's everyone doing? Hi. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Um, yeah, we were supposed to do, um, well, we, as per our old schedule, we were supposed to do last week for the webinar, but we've now um, made some changes. So we're now going to be doing it every second Wednesday of the month, uh, starting from yep. today. Um, and yeah, this one's a, a, li a little bit different to our usual ones. We're going to be talking about a new feature. Uh, just before we, we move on though, Louis, I just want to share with everyone where they can uh, access all future Bev lounges. So our marketing team has created this lovely page where you can subscribe to the next Bev lounge. Um, and in the future as well, you'll see a little playlist of all the previous ones. So that would be amazing. And I think the fire alarm is on in my building right now. No, oh, I can't hear it. Okay, that's good. What terrible just... timing. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. I'll just stay here until someone tells me to leave. As long as you can't hear it. No, I can't, surprisingly. But yeah, like uh, like Luz, we're we're saying we this uh, Vev Lounge is a little bit different to uh, our previous ones uh, that have been more sort of uh, general or topical uh, on more our industry and inspiration. Because today we are actually covering a feature release. We are indeed, yeah. yeah. So we're going to be covering um, our new feature, embed anything, um, and. With us to talk about today, we have uh, Gaffrey from our product marketing team. So let's say hello. Let's introduce her. Hello. Yay. Hi, Lars. Hi, Marlene. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good to hear. Um, we we're also going to have uh, Halit as well, who's uh, who was also part of this project as well. Um, but he's just had a baby. So congratulations to you, Halit, if you're yeah. watching. Or Shout out to Halit. <laughs> Halit is busy in baby duty. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. He's loving it though. <laughs> For sure. But we're really happy that you could join the Vev Lounge, Gathry, to uh, walk us through the background for the new feature and demo it, how it works, uh, and all sorts of stuff around it. So, do you maybe want to give a quick introduction of yourself to to the audience today? Sure. My name is Gayatri, and uh, I joined Web as the new product man uh, marketing manager. And I prominently work with the integrations and developer experience team. And my main role in Web is to uh, get the features out to the users and uh, get the uh, kind of help center articles and blog posts and everything that, uh, that our users need to make use of the feature in an optimal way. Awesome. And you've only been with Web for about a month? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really impressive that you've already had a first uh, feature release. So that's awesome. Yes. It's super exciting to uh, uh, to work uh, with, uh, with a you know, really agile team and uh, quick developing uh, feature. It's quite, quite great. Amazing. So just a, a quick question. What's your favorite thing about Vev so far? So Not far, the company, the product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, like I already mentioned, like um, I mainly work with the integrations team, meaning uh, I work with Vev uh, along with the third party tools for the integration purposes. Uh, despite that, I managed to try a couple of good features on web. Uh, like, uh, I really like the features that give that uh, 
extra attention to the users like which acts along with the uh, scrolling uh, features like uh, slow scrolling or scrolling with a zoom feature uh, those things and um, i also like uh, the collaboration uh, collaboration features on web like commenting and you can uh, you can actually see what your uh, your teammate can uh, is doing or what part of the web uh, page or the project he is working yeah. up, moving up <laughs> Yeah, you can stalk what other people are doing on your project. <laughs> like, what are you doing in there? <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Okay, should we uh, jump straight into it before we uh, have like a, a our um, build in public feature? Uh, we want to stick to the inspiration, but just a little bit different uh, than what we usually do. Want to show you. Um, sort of the background to why the feature was made, um, why it's even needed, and so on and so forth. So yeah, so, I'm, so we made a blog article for this, which I'm just sharing in the chat now. Um, should I open this out or? Take it away, Lewis. Take it away. So that's, yeah, let's take a look. Um, just have a brief look at it, just so you, um, to give some context to, to what this is and, you know, why why it's important um, as, an, as a new feature or an updated feature. Um, let's go. So, yeah, we've created the blog article, which um, we have shared in the chat, um, written by Gaffrey as well, which is wonderful. Um, but, yeah, basically it goes through all the details of, why this is important. I'm obviously not going to read this word for word. You can discover this for yourself, but we're going to be covering a lot of this um, and, and why it's important in this uh, in this Vev Lounge for you today. Um, but yeah, and anything to add on that? Uh, yes, I think this is, a, this is a great feature that we built based on uh, like different user groups that really want to build some amazing stuff on uh, Vev and uh, embed on embed literally anywhere. So the feature named just like embed anywhere. So you build your projects on web and uh, you can embed it uh, on your CMS or any other place on web. And so this is like a CMS agnostic feature. So regardless of the CMS or e-commerce platform that you're using, as long as they approve um, embeds or HTML codes, you can embed your project there with this feature. Right. Yeah, I think a, a good example of this is this uh, WWF page, um, which I'll just uh, bring up on the screen. Um, so this is uh, a page which they, I'm not quite sure the CMS they're using is um but for example the header and footer they've got on here and like the search is part of their cms system and then the content inside here uh, was created in vev and it's been embedded so you know you can see that it works really seamlessly um i mean if i didn't tell you you probably would not have known <laughs> which is uh, always uh, and just they're they're actually using wwf no sorry wordpress so wwf is using wordpress yeah yeah, it's uh, yeah, you can't you can't tell at all. It's it's. Yes, I, I'm and... not gonna say perfect because um, I think the developers might uh, tell me off for that, but <laughs> but it's it's bet is I think it's perfect. So <laughs> amazing. So we dive yeah dive into I guess some more of the use cases how this um. I guess this feature came to be and why what's the difference between you know what we previously had compared to this sort of new updated version sure um uh, especially we uh, this feature caters to the users when especially the, like you showed uh, the website that is built on uh, on the cms uh, from uh, on wordpress so these kind of CMSs, their main goal for the users is to manage their content. But as a, as a user, they prefer to have the content uh, beautifully presented to their audience. So in order to get that goal uh, served, they try to, when they have uh, their projects on web, 
they can make beautiful projects used using all these advanced animating features and all these uh, add-on features on web so this is the main thing that when they can uh, embed these web projects on their main cmss it can uh, actually give the kind of uh, kind of thing that they want their users to learn about and give the uh, overall actual feel of their product or service so this is the main thing like where web can complement the user on their main platform it could be a cms it could be a e-commerce website or anything like that and i think this is especially good cuz for example um like in my career previously um a lot of tech stacks can be really complicated um yes. and hard to integrate like think you know well a lot of say things i've ever we've made it very easy but sometimes introducing something else into your system or your or your tech stack can be you know really complicated um you know it has to then go through you know developers or you know if you're a, a business that doesn't have developers internally you have to send that externally and it can be quite costly so being able to have the ability to just you know embed it yourself into a, into your cms system mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you're running is um you know quite a big time saver and cost saver as well at the same time yes yes and people who are also using like different kind of platforms they get used to the existing platform and sometimes not able to build the kind of features they want to use so uh, this embed uh, code that you, that you will be showing will be showing in a couple of minutes in the webinar it's easy to fetch and also it it is integrated across like embed you can embed it uh, across any of the platforms uh, or which is which you can uh, it gets uh, except like there are some limitations like when you have uh, when you don't have the administration rights or something or some kind of scripts or anything are blocked because uh, some organizations they don't accept the third party scripts or uh, tags so in that case they might have to reach out to their uh, system administrator and get it done Mm -hmm. otherwise uh, the embed feature the M the your uh, the web content uh, perfectly embeds anywhere perfect okay. and what what would you say like the the biggest thing in this release because obviously we had an embed feature previously what's like the biggest changes that we've made to make uh, it better yes firstly we have made it a little compact it was actually a bigger kind of a code with which is embedded within uh, div tag and something like that we that is one uh, we came down from two liners to one liner code and uh, with the new embed uh, code uh, the content aligns more uh, perfectly uh, with lesser complications with related to styling issues or anything like that and also we also tested it recently that uh, when you are embedding your uh, web content onto any of the cmss it is absolutely trackable uh, indexed to via google mm -hmm. yes and uh, just to add on that as well when we tested the seo scores internally they were remarkable as well on the new embed feature so that's pretty pretty cool yeah make the you know, creating for the web and integrating between uh, tech uh, extremely smooth. Yeah. So I suggest we just jump into it. We Yeah, definitely. Yeah. One, one thing I want to mention as well is um, that our, because a lot of like, um, I guess like sort of web content creation sort of platforms where you, you embed onto a page, um, they use iframes, which uh, they're very limited. So iframes actually give you sort of like a window into another website. So it isn't tracked. Um, there are some like responsive issues. So for example, if it's an iframe, like there'll be like a double scroll on your page. So you have like a box which has a scroll in it, but our embed is actually an embed. So you, you know, the content works with your page. So it's, you know, it scrolls and it's completely seamless as, as you saw an example that we had earlier. Um, but yeah, let me, I'm going to share my, um, my screen and we're going to take a look at. Also, uh, I, sorry for interrupting you. No, but no, I right. <laughs> always do this. <laughs> no, but uh, just one thing to clarify as well, because 
in our library uh, of features, which you can find in the ad menu, we, we also have another feature sim called embed. So just so that it's completely clear that these are two completely separate features, that is that we have one feature called embed anything, which is where you can embed uh, from other third party tools into your web projects. And then we have this one called Embed Anywhere, which is that you can publish your web project or you can embed your web project anywhere. So there's a difference between Embed Anything and, and Embed Anywhere. And Louis is just showing us uh, quickly here the, the Embed Anything. So. Oh, yeah, I think I may have said uh, the wrong thing at some point. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, we're covering it's, Embed anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to keep your tongue straight in your mouth for this yeah. one. Sometimes it runs without thinking too much, which is quite often. But yeah, here's an example uh, on the screen. So in the, the design editor, I've added the embed anything uh, element onto the canvas. And then here you can paste in like an embed code. And then if you preview, for example, then you'll get, for example, here we've embedded our, um, our link to our next webinar. Uh, next month, so that you know it works. As you can see, it works completely in in design. Um, however, when you are in the actual preview, the um, sometimes this won't appear. Sorry, the preview, the the actual editor. This doesn't uh, show what's embedded until you hit preview or publish. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind. But what we're talking about is, for example, in this project here, we have um, a page that we've uh, created. Um, you can, as I'm scrolling through the editor here, you can see everything. And when you're ready with your project and you want to get that going, we can head over to the publish button here at the top. And then first of all, you will need to make sure that this option is ticked. So embed your site anywhere. Um, we always recommend though that when you are uh, putting something live, that you put something onto a staging domain first. And with Vev, you get your own staging domain, so you don't need to worry about setting that up yourself. Um, but send that to a staging domain first and test your site in you know a variety of different uh, window sizes just to make sure you know you're happy with it in, in, in all devices. Uh, and then when you're ready to go, you can then go to here, tick this, embed your site anywhere, and select publish project. And then it will optimize uh, all the assets on on the page and send it to that embed location as well. And then once that uh, is done, it may take a minute or so. And then there we go. So that's all done. And then when that's ready to go, all you have to do is next to this is select the get embed code uh, little link here. And then this will open out um, into the options here. D Jeffrey, do you want to explain what all the, all the different things in here mean? Sure. And uh, if we go just one, um, the first option over there is to select the number of pages that are uh, there on your uh, existing project. Uh, we have just one page. And our current embed uh, script also supports one page embed uh, for this release. And uh, the second uh, uh, tab there is to adjust your content to if you want to adjust the, uh, the existing content to any specific target container, then you can uh, actually specify the class name or ID of it in the in the second uh, box there. And then and what would be a good use case for for somebody using this? Yes, for example, uh, I would I, I actually wanted to tell it uh, in the later part, but I can also. Mention oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll, 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 let, I'll let you uh, I'll let you say that later. But I can also <laughs> mention it here because uh, it's we always uh, recommend the user to make the projects depending upon the container size of the destination platform. So, for example, if the destination platform's container is around 600 pixel or 700 pixel, so it's uh, advisable to uh, to fix the breaking point on uh, on the web project as tablet view as a default one and delete the higher version of it. That is the desktop view has to be deleted so that the alignment part of it on the third party the, on, on your CMS will be proper. So that is one uh, one thing that you should do for having a better styling. And um, yeah, and the next part is like copying the script. Uh, when you see the checkbox uh, just below the publish or embed model there, it that is a checkbox if you want the content to spread 
to the uh, to the whole width of the screen then you have to check that box and so you you see the whole uh, see the web content spread through the whole screen width and then you can just copy the button here as well yeah. I'm just highlighting it uh, yes. but yeah we've got a quick link there which i completely ignored um, which copies that um, yes and then we can close this. And then, um, for example, if we want to embed this onto, say, like a WordPress page. So um, this is, um, I, I believe, this, this is this Gut the Gutenberg editor? Is that right? Yes. On this one. But it doesn't necessarily have to work with a Gutenberg editor in WordPress because there's a lot of different um, variety of how WordPress set up, um, sites are set up. Um, some of them use a really old version, some of them use the brand new version, um, but they all will have some form of um, HTML editor in there. Um, and in this example here, um, I've already put the script in, but usually they use like a sort of like a block builder. So if we press the plus here on the left hand side, it will give us access to all the blocks. And then usually there's something like a custom HTML or something like that. So that's where you would uh, paste that code into. So I've added that into here and pasted the code in. And then if we uh, either preview it or publish it, so I'm going to click preview and open that up in a new tab, we can see that the page that we've created is in here. It's working um, with like the animations. And here I've got like mouse parallax and stuff. And as I scroll through, um, you can see, yeah, labeled images are working, um, animations. Here we've got scrolly telling. And this, this is working as expected, videos. And then at the end here, we've got horizontal scroll as well. So as you can see, everything in here works as expected. Um, and it's embedded onto this uh, WordPress page. Yeah, and just to chime in there, not for stating the obvious, but uh, you can embed this anywhere. So even though we're showing it to you now on a, on a WordPress Gutenberg example, it can be any CMS uh, or any e-commerce platform or headless CMS or whatever you're using that allows for you to embed, um, you can publish your word projects, word projects, <laughs> dev projects into those. I mean, you could <laughs> just have a project with, with words in it. I don't know. I just have a massive. <laughs> but you know, you know where I where I'm going. Just to clarify, it doesn't have to be WordPress. It's just an example that we're showing. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's how that works. Is there any other features on this you want me to show before I jump out um, of the screen share? Uh, if you could just go back to the web project. Yep. So the checkbox that is just in front of the web, uh, embed anywhere, embed mm -hmm. your site anywhere, that is very important to be checked in, checked so that your embed uh, code works properly on your uh, on your CMS. That is one thing. And uh, also, for example, when we are fetching the embed code, uh, if you could click on get embed code, uh, the second field over there, uh, the embed target container, like I mentioned, if you want to embed, now we are just embedding the whole web page or a whole page of uh, the web project into uh, onto uh, uh, WordPress. So for example, if you have made some kind of a CTA button, some call to action button or something, and which you want to specifically uh, get into a particular kind of container, then that uh, the second option over there, uh, the embed target container, it helps uh, to get your embed content just uh, at that particular container. So that is the main use of that. And um, yeah, and obviously you need to publish your project before it is get before you try to or attempt to embed it anywhere. Yeah, and one thing we'll mention as well is that when something is embedded, um, you if you make updates to your project and republish, you don't have to reset yeah. the embed code. It will send it to that location. Um, yes. So once the embed's on there, it, it doesn't have to um, you know you don't have to paste it in each time you make an update to uh, your project. It's just uh, one time uh, you do it, like you just embed your project once, and whenever you change or publish uh, publish new changes onto your web project, the changes automatically will reflect on you onto your CMS. Yeah, it so may be a couple a of times, uh, the browser caching or something, 
but uh, you can always uh, get the features automatically on your CMS. Perfect. Cool. Um, any f yeah, I think that's everything on here. So if I stop sharing my screen, you, would you guys be happy? <laughs> I'm always happy if I can see your face. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna jump. Yeah, jump back now and stop sharing. Sorry for the for the mirror there. It, it goes on forever. But we uh, actually have a question from the audience. Should we just uh, take it right away? Yeah, far away. And uh, so Eric says, "Hi there. Looks great. How would it work if I want to leave header and footer navigation from the CMS?" So I assume keeping header and footer as is, as uh, set up in the CMS and then embedding a web project. Yeah, so a lot of um, CMS systems, for example, WordPress, um, the header and th uh, footer, footer is a uh, part of the theme. So those things are you know, available on every single page. Whereas when you create um, a new page, we we'll use WordPress, for example, but a lot of CM CMS systems work exactly the same way. When you create a page, it's just the content specific to that page. Um, so the header and footer will always be that prominent part of, of the website. Um, so when you embed, those things uh, will, will still be there. So the example that we gave earlier with the uh, WWF site, um, they had the header and footer. That was part of the CMS that they had in their theme on WordPress. And then the content uh, in the body that you saw was the embed. So it doesn't uh, doesn't conflict uh, with it. It will just set it between um, you know those two parts of the page, which are the header and footer, which is already part of that theme. Sounds amazing to me. Yeah, super easy. So if you've already got like you know a whole uh, a whole website, um, you know that already has all those all those things. You may maybe it has a search integrated for maybe an e-commerce platform, so it's searching between products and things like that. Um, it doesn't you know block that and it doesn't um, hide it or anything like that. So you can keep it part of your system with with very little work, which is what makes it so good. And what I mentioned earlier was that. If you introduce it to your tech stack, it, you know there's, there isn't a lot of hoops to jump through, um, or or there any as long as you've got the heaven, you've got the embed code, and your IT team's happy um, for you to put it on there, then then you're all good. Sweet. Yeah. Um, um, I think that kind of leads us onto the open mic where people can ask us any questions that they might have. Uh, because this web lounge is a little bit of a special one with a feature release, um, it's kind of the demo and and then the questions. So happy to have uh, any questions that you have about this feature or any other feature for that matter. So um, yeah, so I've just opened up the uh, the Q and A box. Um, so that should appear if you guys want to enter a question or as well. Um, I mean, some people just put it in the chat, which is also fine. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, well, let's give it a And also the web content that is embedded on the CMS is searchable internally as well. If you have the web, uh, for example, now you embedded a web page on WordPress, so you can search uh, from the WordPress for the content that is within web and it will come up. Oh, that I didn't know. That's oh. actually, wow. I guess, yeah, that's really impressive, actually. I guess that goes back to the crawlability um, that you mentioned before, with, like search engines and stuff like that can find it because, yeah, that's actually very, very impressive. I think that will help yeah. a lot of people when they navigate their uh, all their projects and their pages and their CMS. That's very good. I think any question, any questions, guys? Doesn't have to be about the uh, the embed anywhere mm -hmm. feature. <laughs> anything on web? Yeah, anything mm -hmm. web wise. We're here. We're here to help. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe today's okay. web lounge was just short and sweet. Yeah, well, I think people are very shy today. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Marlin, maybe you wanted, to, while we're waiting for questions coming, maybe you wanted to uh, tell them about the other um, Whoa. webinar yes. that we start doing. Just a little um, promo there for another webinar that we're doing. So if you have any people that are new to your team or uh, new to VEV uh, and not new to your team um, that need a quick intro to VEV and how to navigate um, the platform, we have created a new event called Intro to VEV. So that will be happening every Friday. Um, and you can register for it here. Super, super basic. So for some of the more intermediate designers and uh, uh, developers and people who want to learn the how-to, it might not be uh, necessary. Like I said, it's more navigating the platform, understanding where to look for help and resources and just uh, getting started really. Amazing. And this will be, is it every week? Every week, every Friday every for week. now. Might change the date later, but for now it's every Friday. So uh, on the link I sent, you can uh, register. It will always be the updated link for the next um, Intro to Web event. Amazing. Um, and we just had two questions come in, but they cover the same thing. Um, but they're saying, what is planned for the next iteration of this feature? Um, you know, what other improvements and fixes um, are we going to be looking at? to push the needle further yeah uh, in our next release we are really focusing on uh, the multiple page embed as of now the embed code that we get is like you have to get the code uh, default code for each page and embed uh, in our upcoming release we are trying to get the multiple page embed we worked on the styling and uh, uh, to perfectly embed into the proper container size and all. Uh, in our next release, we are just fine tuning to all this uh, multiple page embed and all that. Amazing. And then, and then, and then we're done. Uh, there will be <laughs> many improvements <laughs> ongoingly. Then we can all go home finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, another question from M saying, um, "I'm new here. Welcome to VEV." Um, haven't tried embed anything in Bev. Is it just as simple as embed anywhere? So yeah, briefly covered it earlier, but I will uh, share my screen again um, to sort of show you how that works. Um, I mean, the simple answer here is yes. <laughs> it is, <laughs> it's very simple, but in your project, um, on your canvas, all you need to do is access the app menu. So you can go to the plus at the very top, or you can press M on your keyboard to just open it out. And then you just search for embed anything. And then you click it, and then you basically click and drag it onto the canvas so you can specify the size of it. And then once it's in your canvas, all you need to do is double click it, and then it will give you the, uh, the option to uh, paste your HTML code. So if I grab the one that I had earlier again, um, so I'm just going to copy that in, paste that in, and that goes in there absolutely fine. And then once we close that, you'll see uh, straight away that it hasn't embedded it here on the actual design editor. But when we press preview or if it's on the published page, you can see that the embed uh, works in there. So this is, yeah, an example of our next webinar that we've got next month. But it's as simple as that. <laughs> and I think uh, it's important to mention here as well that this can be for absolutely anything. So any third-party platform that gives you an embed code as an output, whether it is um, you know, YouTube or a data platform, or you know, it can be whatever, mm -hmm. um, you can embed it into your Word, uh, WordPress. I mean, Bev. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> it's okay. You had you had the last webinar off, so you're a little bit rusty. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth mentioning as well that some um, third-party um, providers don't actually do proper embedding. So when you select the embed or share function on, on their page, they will give you an iframe instead of an embed. So as I mentioned before, there's some issues with iframes, like in terms of like, 
um, the responsiveness and there'll be a scroll within your project. Um, but, but sometimes if that's all they give you, that's all you have to work with. So um, in that event, there is a specific iframe um, uh, element as well. So you can go in and do exactly the same thing. So you can go in there and then put the URL to page or the link in. Um, and you can also scale it as well, um, which is an option in there too, which is also, I guess, another way of embedding things uh, onto your project. Which, yeah, covers covers that nicely, I think. You are Kim from Bev just put in the chat. Oh no, I was too late. I missed it. I had a meeting. Can you take it from the top? But uh, sorry, Boo, you were too late. Well, uh, we can do a private session. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be glad to know, though, that these sessions are recorded and we put them on our YouTube. And YouTube yeah. or Vimeo? We put it on our Vimeo, don't we? Um, maybe YouTube as well. I'm not quite put it sure. On YouTube. Okay. We've got everything in there. Um, so you can watch it from the top if you want and skip through. Um, any bits you already know, but you know everything already, so that's fine. Oh, we have a very interesting question here in the chat. So can you elaborate on the page width? There is a setting called ensure embed fills width of screen, and checking this nicely fits the full browser screen, but unchecking it, I get an unexpected narrow result. So why is it even an option to have it unchecked? Question mark. Yeah. Joachim's gave a very technical answer to that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> us do it. <laughs> but am I correct in assuming that the reason it's narrow is because the CMS, um, the settings on that page, they usually have like a specified width. So, for example, um, it will be like 900 pixels or something like that. So by checking that box... Um, by technical, as um, Yokums has said, it's put the max width and margin to auto. Um, if it's un unticked, it will specify the. It will just conform to what the page is saying is the width of the page, even though it's not necessarily the full width of that window. If that makes sense. Hopefully, I explained that well enough. <laughs> Yokum can confirm if I've. Uh butchered his uh his answer yeah i got it right <laughs> when you set the fill width parameter vev hacks itself to stretch itself to left zero and right zero of the screen so if you want to ensure that um it's full width and looks exactly how it does in your web page just make sure that uh, box is ticked but obviously there will be there are some use cases um where you might not want to do that um so for example some people don't use vev for entire pages they might just use it for like maybe a specific small section on that on their cms or something or maybe like an ad banner or a link or something like that so that would be when um you would might not use it cool any more questions i'm coming Eric says it works as expected. That's what we like to hear. Does full whip work settings in all conditions and on all CMS you have tested? That's what I leave that to you, Gaffrey. You've done a lot of testing on this, so. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I think it's important to mention here that it is CMS agnostic. So it's not like it works well for some and not well for others. Obviously, there can be restrictions within some CMSs, but there are so many CMSs out there in the world um, that uh, it's hard to find limitations in all of the CMSs that exist. But uh, it it works it works fine for most of the CMSs. We uh, we tested it on like Drupal, Sanity, and and many of like WordPress, and it did work uh, well with most of them, uh, with all of these uh, that I mentioned. And uh, there could be some limitations based on uh, like I mentioned when you have some kind of uh, tags or scripts that are restricted from your system administrator or something, then it wouldn't uh, show up. The web content may not show up. So it has to be fixed from the system administrator. And also sometimes 
it's like um, there are different embedding procedures on each of the platforms that that you have to like if you are familiar with that kind of uh, cms platform then it is easier for you to quickly embed your content Eric but, mentioned that he's going to try it on sitecore on a, on one of his client site have you tested that one before i've not even heard of that one mm, no <laughs> but um that's if no anyone... Eric. <laughs> that's what i was gonna say if anyone in the rooms tests uh, this feature on any other site uh, or any other cms platform sorry and it doesn't work as expected please reach out to us and let us know and we'll uh, look into it and see see um if there's anything we can help with there and satya's asked uh how about custom single page apps built in react or view.js which is that's uh that's definitely a Yoakum question. I'm glad you're here, Yoakum. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we also have yeah our Discord as well. So anytime you have any technical questions, yeah, Yoakum loves to live on there and answer your questions as well. So uh I'll have to get you on on here sometime, Yoakum, to uh go through some some technical questions that people have. But well, we do have our technical um dev uh webinar as well on our discord which i can't remember what dates they are do you know mommy every other thursday on discord it's vev talks dev you can log into discord and chat with um peter one of our senior developers and uh, that's awesome but to the question about uh custom single page apps built on react I would assume that as long as uh, they have the opportunity or option to embed, um, yeah, because as uh, Joachim uh, is writing here, Vev has static output, so uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So as long as those React pages uh, or Vue.js pages are uh, allowing you to embed from a third party, there shouldn't be an issue. Uh, with this. Perfect. Great questions coming through. I'm in way over my head. I'm not technical. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a designer. Oh, you're definitely <laughs> technical. I just make things look pretty. No, you're definitely <laughs> technical. Developers well. make it work. <laughs> I think we need a Joachim from Vev, Vev Lounge. Yeah, he said he'd love to join us, so <laughs> we can definitely do that. <laughs> Cool. Let's see if there are any more questions. Sorry, Gathra, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I think Jokin would have a different dimensions of web. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. More than anyone, I think. Yeah. For sure. But um, let's see if there comes any other questions in the next minute or so, or there's no shame in wrapping up a little bit early. Great questions, though. Good session. Yeah, we'd love to hear more about, um, you know, what CMS systems that you use, because there's a lot of them. Um, we try to cover the major ones, um, you know, the most popular ones, you know, like WordPress, for example. Um, but there is a lot. <laughs> but as we said, yeah, as long as it has the capability and doesn't, um, you know, block any scripts or anything like that, it will work. Um, Yakima said, but if you code locally using the Vev CLI, you can reuse the components you build in Vev in Vue, for example, by removing example the um yeah, I, I'm not going to say that. He's writing code stuff. Uh, but basically he's saying if you can reuse the components in your um Vue.javascript um builder, I guess. Frederick has asked. Oh, he has said, I am the lead tech at Vev. We'll jump over to Discord 2 to answer more there. So we have a lot of developers in there um, ready to answer all your questions, which is super Actually, cool. life hack. If you want to get really technical with Vev, um, Discord is the place to be. OK, guys, but I think uh, that's a wrap. I think so. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, Gathry. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, very much.
Thank you to the audience. Thank you for the great questions. And keep an eye out on the Vev Lounge landing page and register for the next one. We'll update soon with pr promotions uh, on who the next guest is going to be, what we're going to talk about, uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So and until next time. Have, join Marlin on Friday. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to get so sick of my face. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.